Hey everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR, Happy New Year. Today I want to talk about what you guys need to adapt your Gen 3 LS engine to your old school transmission that's already in your vehicle, or what you need to mix and match other transmissions. So let's begin. Alright, first up, I want to take the opportunity here to plug myself. I have a Patreon page. If you guys want to support me, that would be cool. It would help me out a lot with uh, getting parts and projects and doing stuff for the channel so that I can continue to show you guys different things. Um, if you don't want to help, that's fine too. I don't, you know, I'm not going to hold it against you or anything. You know, I'm not. If you want to donate, if you like what I'm doing, you want to support me, that's, that's cool. And if you don't, that's cool too. I'm going to keep posting the same way either way. Uh, the next thing I want to do is plug my Facebook page. Next up, I want to encourage you guys to go check out the Driveway Engineer group. The files that I use in this video are located in the file section of my group here. This is the easiest way to get a hold of me if you have questions about what connects to what, what you need, what you don't need, etc., etc. Um this is the best way to get a hold of me so be sure to check this out on facebook i'm also on instagram and twitter same name if you have any questions whichever one you prefer so to start with i'll cover something that seems to trip a lot of people up there are two long crankshafts out there. They are 400 thousandths longer than other LS cranks. The 1999 and 2006 liter are all long crankshafts. If you have a 6 liter with iron heads, it has a long crankshaft. If it originally came out of a 99 or 2000, it has a long crankshaft. If you have a 99 or 2000 4.8 that, that was originally in front of, I don't know why I wrote behind, but whatever, in front of a manual transmission it also has a long crankshaft. They did this to make them compatible with the Gen 1 SVC transmissions. Um, at the time that they were still selling them in the 2500s and stuff, there was a old, the classic OBS and then the new BS ran side by side. So for a while there they kind of did a Ford thing and, and had a mismatch of parts. If you have one of these engines, which you probably don't, but if you do, with the flex plate that's on it, or a flex plate from a 6.0 on your 4.8, it will bolt directly to your old school transmission, your turbo 350, 400, whatever. It, it just bolts right to it. You don't need to do anything. I just zoomed in. Um, good grief. All other Gen 3 cranks are short. Your 4.8, your 5.3, your 5.7, and your 6.0. Those are all short. Um, so, that's probably what you have. And you probably have a truck motor. If you're watching my channel. Uh, an important note, to, uh, an important thing to notice is the 4L80 never changed from the SBC uh the height of the snout on the converter okay so you can put like a 2008 4l80 behind a 350 and it'll match up right so you always need a flat flex plate and a 6.0 spacer with this part number in order to go from an ls to a 4l80 the part number on the spacer is one two five six three five three two and I'll list that below so now that we have the cranks out of the way for the rare people who have a 99 and 2006.0 or even a rarer 4.8 that came behind a or came in front of a manual we can deal with everybody else how you adapt to your transmission depends on the flex plate you have. If you have a 4.8, a 5.3, or a 5.7 stock, you have a dished flex plate. And this is readily apparent because the flat flex plate is literally flat. It's as flat as a mirror 
flat as a pancake. I mean, it's perfectly flat. Okay? Six liters have a flat flex plate stock. Now, my six liter that's in Daryl, my C10, came out of a 1500 that was in front of a 4L60, the stock 4L60 for that truck. So I had a dish plate and the spacer that I listed above. So be sure to check because if, you know, things have changed or whatever, but if you, if you pulled it out of the donor yourself, then you know what it had. So with that in mind, we'll cover how to adapt flex plates to transmissions because really that's what matters is which flex plate you have on your engine. If you put a straight edge across it and it bows down visibly, you have a dish flex plate. It doesn't matter if it's on a 6.0 or a 4.8. To go from that dish flex plate to a power glide, a turbo 350, 400, whatever, you only need one part and it's ICT billet 551165. It's a little spacer. Uh, it, it has a step on it. Let me open a picture for you here. It looks like this, kind of. So this has a smaller diameter. This little shiny gray area right here is the crank flange. And see where this steps in? It's smaller right there. So the whole thing just plops into the back of the crank. And then your snout on your torque converter will sit inside here. And it keeps it from wobbling with a bunch of run out. Um, that's really the only part you need if you have a dish flex plate. Now the bolt pattern doesn't quite match up. You'll use 5 out of 6 holes. Because the LS has a bolt at 12 o'clock and the older transmissions don't have that. But it doesn't matter. Um, they bolt right up. You need to slot the holes slightly in order to line up. So test fit your converter ahead of time. On the flat flex plate to the older transmission, you need three parts. You need Chevrolet Performance flex plate bolts. These are longer. Part number 1256353. You need the Chevrolet Performance spacer. Part number 1256353. See how the part numbers go together? And you need the spacer, the uh, snout adapter listed above which is ICT billet 551165. Other people make this spacer. Hughes makes it, Summit, TCI. I've just, I've used ICT billet. It works. I like it. So, you know, that's all I really know. I can't say anything about the other ones. And as far as bolting your transmission to your engine, that's it. You can mix and match flex plates if you want. If you want to just get the 5348 dished one and put it on your 6.0 so that you only have to buy one part, you can do that. Um, you can get SFI flex plates. They make thicker. TCI makes a thicker flex plate so you don't need a spacer. You can order a converter with a longer snout to engage that so that you don't have to have a spacer or anything. But you don't have to do any of that. This is the bare minimum that you need. To just recap, the bare minimum you need is this one part that's $23 right now in January of 2019. To go from a dish flex plate on a 5.3 or 4.8 stock. Um, and you need three parts that add up to like 70 bucks. To go from a flat flex plate on a 6.0 stock to a turbo 350 or 400 or whatever. So if you combine these with the right mounts that put your engine right where it was to begin with, then you can use your factory drive shaft, you can reuse your uh, everything else if you want to. I have some notes here about the 4L60E because it's a little different. The 4L60 started in Gen 1 and then carried into like 2008. Um, so all Gen 1 SBCs, which was going to be, you know, your 350, 305, including the 4.3 liter V6, up through 2001, have a 298 millimeter input shaft. And this is important because it takes a certain converter. 
it takes a small block Chevy converter so it'll have that shorter snout you can tell it apart because it has an o-ring at the very end of the shaft and it's kind of smooth so you adapt this one just like above depending on your input shaft or depending on your flex plate you adapt it um the gen 3s and v6s from like 2002 on which i guess they did because they got tired of carrying two different part numbers they have a 300 millimeter input shaft it's splined all the way to the end and there's no o-ring they are readily different because in like 96 or something they got a bolt-on bell housing so they look like ls ones but they won't have the bolt at 12 they won't have a bolt hole at 12 o'clock and the the input shaft won't be splined all the way so if you're like buying a transmission used from somebody and you need to know which one it is um have them send you a picture of the input shaft and that's how you'll be able to tell and these ones will just bolt onto an ls with a dish flex plate you don't have to do anything that's what they're supposed to have 4L60 is from a 3.4 liter like out of a Camaro or a Trans Am which would be rear wheel drive and have a 4L60 they have the older like 2.8 liter metric kind of bell housing and it doesn't work with LS engines like at all it's completely different there isn't one bolt hole on the thing that lines up as far as I know however the front wheel drive LS4 engines have that same weird bell housing pattern for whatever reason I think because they put the 3.4s in those front wheel drive cars so they probably developed the front wheel drive transmission like that for a reason um but I don't know it's just speculation on my part I don't know if you can use these front wheel drive engines because I don't know how the mounts are cast on the side of the block um I don't know if they're cast like normal and then they built a crazy cradle to drop them in there or if they're cast weird like most front wheel drive engines will have them out like really high up on the block um, usually front wheel drive engines aren't compatible with rear wheel drive chassis because they have one mount really low and one mount really high to keep them from torque twist and flopping over in the uh, transmission or in the engine compartment but that's pretty much it hopefully this helps you out know what you need to have in order to do it it's not as hard as people make it out to be that's all you need to bolt a turbo 350 turbo 400 whatever to the uh ls engine thanks for watching be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more and uh check us out on facebook or instagram in the meantime and we'll see you next time this is jr you guys have a happy new year